So you just got the Nanoleaf 4D, but you don't know what is the best settings and how to get the bed set up. So if you want to know that, and also is it easier to install and obviously to set it up than the Goofy TV Backlight T2. If you want to know everything about this, stay tuned after the intro. Hi everyone, Marcus here from MatPack, and if you love tech and if you love discounts, this is the place for you because everything that you see here on the channel have links on the description below. And today we are going to talk about the Nanoleaf 4D that I have installed on my TV. And when we talk about installation, I'll tell you which things you should do, what is the mistakes that you should avoid, and believe me, you should really avoid them, otherwise it's going to cost you some money, and also I'm going to give you my settings. What is the settings, the customer settings to use this as a 4D option, okay? So if you want the 4D working as I have, I'll show you, and it's the most immersive sensation. Yes, the cinematic is good, but not as good as the ones that I'm going to give you, so stay tuned until the end. And obviously, I'm going to tell you also if I found it easier and better than the calibration here. So let's talk about the installation of your Nanoli 4D. And I have to say to you that this is the second box that I received, because I've done some mistakes that I don't want you to do. First thing that you need to do is to purchase some alcohol. You need to clean properly the back of your TV because unfortunately the 3M glue is not the best when they have just one entire strip of light that do all the curvature. If you clean really well the back of your TV with alcohol, you have more chances that your LEDs will stick to your TV. The second one is since you have LEDs even on the corners, you should start from a center of your TV. On the top or on the bottom, I'll recommend you on the bottom because on the top you'll have your camera. So you have more risks that your strip light is not finishing together if it makes sense. And mine, for example, is finishing on top of each other. You don't need to cut it because since you have to calibrate the corners, the LEDs, they will know that that piece is basically on top of each other, if it makes sense. So the color that is there is going to be the same, but if you start from the center, you have less risks that the corner they starts to come off. Measure your TV and measure the LED. If you don't want that, and if you are super OCD and your LEDs are visible, you should take the measurements. Because also, if you think about it, the LEDs, if you want to cut it, you need to cut in a specific point. Because if you don't cut in that specific point, you'll have issues with your LED. So the next big mistake that you can have if you decided to install your Nanoleaf 4D on your TV is to try to match the shape of your TV. Yes, if you have a TV like the Sony A95K that is much thinner on the top and on the bottom is much, much thicker, please don't try to do that corner, otherwise it's going to happen the same as me your Nanoli 4D will stop working and you need what? A new unit. And you definitely don't want that because otherwise you have to spend the money once again because in the end of the day it's not the fault of Nanoleaf, it's your fault. So avoid that because in that way you'll be saving money in the future. But let's talk about calibration and saving you a lot of time. And one of the things that is really important for you to know is Obviously, Nanoleaf allow you to put the camera on the top or on the bottom. Which one is the best? Don't put it on the bottom, it's a waste of time. I have tried it and I didn't get the best results. So if you put it on the top, you'll have better results. And on the bottom, just to make you aware, obviously you have the stand, but because it doesn't have stops, if you touch it slightly, it's going to close it. What that means is that you have to set it up again. So let's talk about calibration. And yes, I'm not talking about the corners because this is easy. You just go into the corner, go to the next one until you finish that, jump into the camera, and when you go there, I have a massive tip for you because that is an issue. If you do that, you'll have better results. So the first thing is you have the corners on the bottom, just pull them down the maximum as you can, and after just bring them slightly in. When I say slightly, it's really slightly in. When we talk about the top ones, you have the, the green, you are going to bring them in much, much more. And also the one in the middle here, you are going to bring it in much, much more. And the reason behind that is because if you are seeing a content that is in 16 by 9, you have those massive black lines on top and the bottom. And basically, because of that, your Nanoleaf 4D will not work the best in that type of content. But if you do that, you have better results. So when we talk about settings, it's important that, first of all, you set it up really well, your TV. Because if the settings of the TV is wrong, it's going to affect the image on the Nanoleaf 4D because obviously you rely on what the camera is seeing. So first of all, 
set it up your TV properly. If you have a Sony TV, good news, I have you covered because I have done best settings for a Sony TV and I'll leave in the description below. The first settings that you want to set it up on your Nano Leaf 4D is the luminosity. And if you've seen my video of the best settings for the Goofy TV Backlight T2, I had to bring this luminosity down that in that app is called brightness to 40%. Because if it was higher than 40%, it was affecting the colors, it was changing the colors. The good news for Nano Leaf 4D users is that you can bring that brightness to the maximum. And that's the way that I have because it doesn't affect the colors. So definitely a plus. The next one I, I can say that was basically a game changer for me. And I think that obviously Goofy can do improvements in there, but you don't have that option in there. And here the dynamic range is almost the same as you think that you are opening a window. When more open it is, more light it allows to travel through. So it's the same with the dynamic range. When higher is the number on the dynamic range, it's going to basically allow more light. So in other words, if you have a very high dynamic range, you always have some light on the back. So if that's what you want, definitely you can do that here and it's going to be similar to what you get with the Goofy TV Backlight T2. But I wanted to have a more dynamic experience. So if it's a complete dark, image, I want that the, the light basically turns off on the back. So for that reason, I use my dynamic range at 15%. So the next one is important for you to don't have a backlight that is basically overtaking your TV. So if your saturation is too, too high and if that color, imagine a blue, is more saturated than the blue that happens on the TV, your eyes will see a lot of that blue. But if you put that blue at the same level as the blue on your TV, you're going to have a better experience. As it happens on the Goofy TV Backlight T2, I bring the saturation down, but it's a massive difference because on the Goofy, I was forced to put that at 1%. So I had no control whatsoever in there. It was just basically reducing to the minimum. In here, the number that I decided to put is 34%. But remember, it really depends on your calibration of your TV and also which TV you have. But as a reference, if you have a Sony, definitely 34 will be perfect if you follow the other video that I've done. If you have an LG, normally you have to saturate slightly more, but use a 34 as a reference. If you have a Samsung, you normally have to, to saturate less, but use also the 34 as a reference. The last one is the white balance. And the white balance is important for you to every time that you have a different color happening is going to basically match what is happening on the screen and the number that I choose is 3342 you can move slightly and even if you go slightly off of this number is going to be very very similar so much more precise than any backlight TV that I tried before. But if you are still thinking, when we talk about calibration, which one should I purchase, the Goofy TV Backlight T2 or the Nano Leaf 4D, and we'll do a full comparison of these ones because there are things that I prefer here and there are things that I prefer here. First of all, installation. I have to give the points to the Goofy TV Backlight T2. It's so much better when you have a different strip for the top, for the bottom and for the sides. And here you don't have that. This is just one bit. The glue is not the best. You need to clean properly your TV with alcohol, otherwise they will not glue there. So my first point goes to the Goofy TV Backlight T2. The next one is calibration. And um, it doesn't make so much sense for you guys what I'm going to say because you can obviously follow my video. When I calibrate mine, I didn't have that video to follow. It was really painful for me to calibrate this one. I had to do and I have to, to search around for a lot of days, a lot of hours until I could reach the point where I was with my Goofy TV Backlight T2. Here, after I passed the nightmare that it is to set it up behind so to install the LEDs and all that part the configuration on this one is is amazing I really like it and for that reason I have to say that I basically I want to give two points for the Nano Leaf 4D so when we talk about the camera position I have to say if you prefer to put your camera on the bottom and set it up there the Goofy TV Backlight T2 will be best if you want to set it up on the top the Nano Leaf 4D will be the best the last one that I want just to point it out is which one 
have more settings and you already know that answer is the nano leaf because even if for example we talk about saturation and i can change the saturation in both the reality is on the Goovy tv backlight t2 i need it at one percent so it's not really adjustable the brightness i can have it on the maximum because it's going to overpower the color for that reason i think that Goovy can do much much better and this light will be even better than it is already but my last point goes to the Nanoleaf 4D. As you guys know, I have swapped for the Nanoleaf 4D on my living room, but there are still a lot of things that I love about the Goovy TV Backlight T2. So for that reason, I'm going to do a full comparison between these two, giving you all the ups and downs of these two products, if you are still not sure which ones you want to purchase. My name is Marco, this is Matt Peck. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, comment below, smash the thumbs up, do whatever you want, but always with a smile on your face, and I hope to see you in the next video about these two products that I simply love.